For more on all of this, I'm joined now by Bill Crane, a U.S. political analyst. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Uh, there is a belief which is uh, gaining some currency, especially here in Washington, that the action by S&P was a judgment on the political system rather than a criticism of what happened uh, to the economy. Do you share that belief? I think there are two measures that were being pointed out by Standard & Poor's. One is the general uncertainty that the current political leadership team in Washington, and by that I mean in the White House and both chambers of Congress, can deliver the goods. They have a second mission behind the one they just finished, and that is to deliver through that 12-person special commission, six Republicans and six Democrats, another, I believe, $1.7 trillion in cuts on top of the cuts that have already been identified, as well as some potential new revenue enhancements by Thanksgiving in the United States, and then to sign that into law by Christmas, or specifically December the 23rd. There's question in Washington, as well as on Wall Street, about whether this team, showing what they've been showing, can get that done. You know, if we listen to some of the ordinary Americans that we interviewed in that piece we just uh, reported on just now, uh, most of them seem to be totally disillusioned with Congress. They feel that Congress is not engaged with their problems. And I'm wondering, how effective has Congress been in this whole process? Did they achieve anything at all by bulldozing that legislation through earlier this week? Uh, I would say the word that I'm hearing more often than not is disgust. And again, with both parties, not just one, the, the situation never should have gotten to the point that it did where we we're putting not only the financial markets on notice, but having veterans and Social Security recipients and Medicare and Medicaid and, and vendors to the United States government as well as the nations of Saudi Arabia and China wonder if they were going to get paid on time. But I will point out, the last time we raised the debt ceiling, which was something of a non-event that happened in the second term of President George Bush, and the chairs were switched, we had a Republican in the White House and Democrats controlled Congress, Barack Obama, who was in his 22 months in the United States Senate, voted no. So there's a bit of partisan gridlock here that's affecting everything, and there may come a time in the not-too-distant future when U.S. voters start demanding things like coalition government like they have in Great Britain because they're tired of the two parties we do have not delivering. Mm. I'm just wondering how little that partisan gridlock is. Is the country, it seems, far too polarized now, far too divided to get anything achieved? I don't see the country as being divided. I see our leadership teams in Washington at being at pointing fingers impasses. There's a, a, mo a movie in America that it's a sort of iconic here called Rebel Without a Cause, and James Dean, who was a famous actor, played a teenager in the climactic scene of the movie racing down the road, a one-lane road with two cars racing dead head at each other. It's called Chicken. And whoever turns and gets out of the way first loses the game, and sometimes their life running off the road. We had the two parties running at each other, except for the game of Chicken they were playing was with the United States government's credibility and our economy worldwide. We never should have been playing that game. That's a game for teenagers, not for the leader, not for the economy said to be leading the free world. Okay, so we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now for more on reaction around the world to the U.S. credit rating downgrade, let's go back to Hida in Doha.